summoning. Let's let's see what this game is about. I don't even know what I'm getting into. Oh no, I have biscuits. European biscuits. <clears throat> You've taken it upon yourself to indulge your curiosity by plunging headfirst into this game, otherwise known as the summoning. <laughs> Kia. Except this isn't a game. I need you to listen and read very carefully, as I'll only get this one opportunity to explain things for what they are, and you'll only get this one chance to comprehend it before continuing onward into something you may not be entirely prepared for. Before continuing on, you will need a few things. These items are absolutely imperative to your task presented during this session. If you do not have these things, you're wasting your time entirely. <clears throat> it is highly recommended that you play this game with headphones to get the full experience. If you do not have headphones, you may opt to continue anyway, but you absolutely, positively should have your volume at a suitable level, whether you like it or not. Kia! <laughs> <laughs> you will need a mirror or access to a mirror such as in the bathroom a piece of paper a writing utensil such as a pen pencil marker or anything else suitable for writing access to a dark room with absolutely no lights and most importantly you need yourself oh now take a tip okay i have none of those things right now should I try and find those things is the question. Or do we just wing it? What do you guys say? I mean, I can kind of see myself in this in the reflection of this glass. Yeah, and the, like the dark part. Yeah, sure. Uh, shiny calendar, you good, man? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, that, that works, that works. We can turn off the lights when I need to. Okay, yeah, it'll be fine. Here, I've got the webcam. And I can find something to write down. Yeah. Hey, look at that. I got a pin right here. Okay, and uh, a freaking napkin. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're, we're good to go. Now, let's be real here. You also need an open mind. You may be one of those skeptics that like to mock things like this. Or perhaps you're just insecure with your deeply ingrained personal fears. So you're putting on a macho act. However... Money was spent on this experience, and if you fuck this up, you won't get your money's worth. So it's your choice. I spent a dollar sixty. I'm okay. With that being said, this isn't something to be taken lightly for more reasons than it just simply not working. Not working in this case isn't just nothing happening. It could also mean very bad things happening. Just listen. Have you ever thought about contacting beings from another realm? <laughs> Kia, what the fuck? I mean, do you really want me to answer that? <laughs> Things that were here long before we were. Don't! <laughs> Things that walked among us. People we once knew that are now gone. I'd rather see... Well, in that case, I mean... Perhaps things that never walked this earth in human form at any given point in time. What you're about to do is not for the weak of mind or faint of heart. You may think this is complete and utter bullshit. You may think even if this is real, you've got no spirits or entities looming around your residence anyways. Therefore, you've got nothing to come in contact with, even if this is in fact real. No, Drunken Hawk will never happen, sorry. I don't drink. That's just me to make sure I'm hydrated. That's all that drink command is. It's not me drunk. It's me staying hydrated. <laughs> so this is Jumanji. <laughs> and just get him the sugars. It'll give me the sugars. Fuck, I'm using that forever now. <laughs> Oh, I've got a case of the sugars. He's close to time. Jesus Christ. Well, let me tell you something. 
This is very much, in fact, real. And you do have entities lurking around you, whether you've noticed them or not. Honey, I'm t <laughs> Rip that pancreas. <laughs> It's like cherry coke, that's how she's literally- oh god. You see, entities can come along at any point in time for many different reasons that you'd never think about. For example, do you own something you've not made yourself? A pair of clothes, shoes, a hat, a second-hand item of some sort passed down by a relative, perhaps acquired as a used or pre-owned object from a thrift store? I mean, no, I just give it that realism. I can taste color. Is that everything? Or maybe you don't live alone. Maybe someone in your house owns something that fits this description. Yeah, here, my wife is. You know, she's out here knitting. An ornamental plate, a cup, an article of clothing, a used book, a box. Anything that was owned by someone that could now today be deceased either way even if none of this fits your lifestyle guess what spirits can travel a lot further than you think a bowsette poster <laughs> do you have neighbors well if they're haunted so are you the spirits haven't just been invited improperly to make themselves acquainted yet with that being said, what you're about to embark upon is by far the realest experience you will ever get to have in your life if done properly. So much history. <laughs> I plan on passing that down to my to my son, to my grandchildren, to their children's children, and so on and so forth. Don't put Hey, 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 I have not been untoward with the black with, with the uh with the Bowsette poster, okay? Black light will show nothing, okay? How dare you insinuate such a thing? Generation. <laughs> now, there are rules, of course. <clears throat> For example, you've got to be alone. If you're not alone, the person with you must participate. If they refuse to participate, they must leave. If you do not follow this instruction, this will not work. Okay, so am I technically alone or am I not because you all are watching me do this? Guess we get this together, laddies. Is that ladies or laddies? Are we real? <laughs> Is any of us real? <clears throat> if you start this process and you do not see it through to the end, this will not work. If you do not follow every instruction clearly and concisely, or do not heed every warning, this will not work. Or worse. It is of paramount importance that you follow every instruction exactly as written. This is not to be taken lightly. This is not to be mocked. You only get one shot at this experience. Do not mess it up, or you will not be able to attempt it a second time. Before we continue, I'd like to explain that by venturing forth into this experience, you acknowledge that all supernatural damages or otherwise ill effects of any kind is entirely your own liability. <clears throat> Oh god, you're right. By continuing up, <laughs> that piano's just up there on that wall. That piano's just sitting up there on that wall. It's hanging from the wall. You will acknowledge and waive all liability on my part. I will not be held responsible for anything that does or doesn't happen to you, your belongings, or those around you during your session, or at any point onward once the session has come to a close. <laughs> Smaller pig. Right now I have to notice again. Once you start, you may not stop until your session is complete, which could take anywhere from 30 minutes to one hour, or more depending on how slowly you go. But you must complete your session no matter what happens. The deep, deep fireplace. By acknowledging this disclosure, you agree with all terms written thus far. By backing out now, your session will end immediately before it has even begun. Do you accept these terms? Huh, I take full responsibility and accept, or I do not accept. Close my session now. So, obviously we want to accept, right? I mean, 
It's a tiling picture, and it's, oh god, it's not even tiling properly. Look at that shit. I can see the lines. I, I ain't afraid of no ghost. You've accepted the terms and conditions, as well as full self-liability self for anything that may occur from this point forward. Now, just as a reminder... You're going to need a few items as previously mentioned. Okay. You will need a mirror, a piece of paper, a writing utensil such as a pen, pencil marker, or anything else suitable for writing, access to a dark room with absolutely no lights, and most importantly, you need yourself. <laughs> if you're alone, great. Okay, we already said this. If you're with someone, they must, and I repeat, must do everything as written al right alongside you. If this means speaking out loud, you both recite verses simultaneously in unison. Let me get the whispers. I'll write various instructions for you to follow. You will go around this room from place to place, interacting with all objects in the room until everything has been found. This part is crucial. If this does not work, it's because you did it wrong. Whether or not it was an unintentional misstep or your subconscious attempt to mess things up for you out of fear of what might come as a result of following the instructions properly, it is 100% your own fault if this doesn't work. The first thing you need to do is have all the lights, and I mean all lights, completely turned off. You should have nothing that provides any level of light other than the device you're using to read these instructions right now. Okay, I, I guess we're, uh, we're going dark, folks. Because I was wondering, like, you know... Alright, here we go. Is it all the way? Alright. There go the lights. Okay, we're in the dark now, folks. Alright. The second thing you need is to be alone or with willing participants. Your door must be closed entirely and must not be interrupted during this session. You will need to have the items mentioned formally near you for when they are called upon for use. Honey Nut. A quick warning before we begin. Do not, and I repeat, do not light any candles. <laughs> well, it said you could use the device. So, spooky hog so dark. <laughs> you may think you're making the atmosphere more spooky. You may have read or seen on television that lighting candles can aid in summoning spirits. Just don't. Not only do you not need candles, but all you're doing is giving them another weapon to potentially use against you. Especially with this experience. Do not play with fire. You will regret it. Get okay, nice and close. Again, you've only got one chance to embark on this experience. What you get out of it is entirely what you make of it. If you have a closed mind, if you're acting tough in front of your friends, mocking the instructions, or belittling the powers that be, I feel very, very sorry for you. Oh, she's still there. With that being said, this is it. Are you ready to continue? Oh, Sir Hawk is too dark. Let's begin. Very well. I can't read. You've been warned. You may begin exploring around the room at your convenience. If you can't take any more, you can end the session here. But please heed my warning. Once you've already started, you're much better off toughing it out and finishing. Trust me, something is lingering. Maybe you can't feel it. Maybe it hasn't made its presence known yet. But you cannot send back what has come through without finishing the session as agreed upon in the pact. Does he have a fire? I don't know. <laughs> Just give me no one. <laughs> Are you positive if you wish to end the session? You will have to start the session process over again if you wish to continue at a later time. It's not advice. Okay, I will tough it out and stay. See, you could have made. The spirits hate cowardice and waste of time. 
Only the brave will prevail. Please read carefully, as this is of utmost importance to getting through this experience with your sanity intact. <clears throat> Just do it the cat did. I'm going to give you very clear and concise instructions, and you're going to follow them exactly as they're laid out for you. You're going to need a mirror for this to work. If you do not have a mirror present, you'll need to get go to the bathroom and somewhere with a mirror you can reliably use. Yeah. Once you're standing in front of the mirror, make sure the door is closed and all the lights are off. It should be completely dark around you. You're going to close your eyes while facing the mirror and recite this phrase out loud while keeping your eyes shut. How am I going to remember that shit? Okay. Jesus, wants to remember. Okay. I needed eyes to see you clear. I needed ears to hear you near. I needed a nose to smell your scent. I feel your presence. I give consent. <laughs> Go ahead and recite it a few times aloud right now so you don't forget. Oh, the words before you venture to try it. You mustn't mistake the words or this will not work. Once you've recited the words of the mirror, turn your back to the mirror and then open your eyes. Oh, I already fucked up. Well, like, I love how they don't give the instructions in the proper way. Do not look at the mirror. Trust me, you will not like what you see. Walk back to your seat slowly. Remain calm. Do not turn around. If you hear any whispers or a voice of an old woman, do not respond. Do not answer. Just come back to your device. Slenderman just leaving you on read. If you feel like you're being followed, if you hear footsteps behind you, just keep walking until you get back here and shut the door behind you. If your mirror is located in your room, just sit quietly for a moment until the noises subside and continue onwards. Milf comes down. Oh, I wish. Ara, ara, boo. He throws his beak one more time. Remember it well. I need an eyes to see you clear. I need an ears to hear you near. I need a noise to smell your scent. I feel your presence. I give consent. I'm proud of you. I wish you the best of luck. So we could have set in motion by skipping this trial. Do not press anything until it's complete. Have I completed it? I mean, kinda? It's a booty ghost. Thank <laughs> sure I If it is complete, congratulations. If it isn't, I'm sorry. If you heard any noises, write down what they were on a piece of paper. Use the same piece of paper for all rituals presented to you. If you heard no noises, just simply write silence. Okay? Well. Time to write down silence. Okay. I hope she's liking the room. Oh no, not a booty ghost. I don't, oh, that, that was it. Many of the notes you'll find hidden around this room are straight from real occult books used in actual rituals from hundreds of years ago to bring forth things to our realm, or stories inspired by those very tales and legends written in such books. Once you've started something, you must finish it. Leaving a gateway open without properly closing it can be extremely detrimental. Upon agreeing to the pact when we started, something was opened. The only way to close what was opened is to finish what you started. <laughs> Stay strong of mind and will, and this will be a breeze. Falter, and you will fall. Oh, that's... Have you ever looked at a clock at the same time every day? 3 o'clock every day? One eleven every day? Nine eleven every day? Regardless of the time, it's often the same. But why? When a soul is left on Earth after the body has perished, it will try to communicate with the living by subconsciously reminding a person to look at the clock over and over again. This is to let them know the hour of their death. Kia. Something is trying to communicate with you at all hours of the day, attempting to squeeze in as much information as your psyche is, through your psyche as humanly possible. Because you're their only hope of salvation in the afterlife. They will not stop until they have your undivided attention. 929. Oh, that's... Really? 
Dolls and stuffed animals are a prime target for malicious spirits to use as a conduit into our realm. It's, uh, it's very easy for spirits to attach themselves to any object, but they choose these ones because they're often given plenty of affection and, and attention from the living. That's fighting hour, you mean I can't get Marion? That's twisted tea time. If you've ever placed a doll in an or an inanimate object in one place, only to come back and find it in a different position, even though you could have sworn you placed it elsewhere, then you might be being targeted by a malicious spirit. As many people think this is an act of a playful spirit, I assure you there is no such thing. They want to bring as much attention from you to the object as possible. So you continue to look at it, waste time trying to recreate it just to see if it moves again. But it very rarely ever does, does it? Just you getting old? No, of course not. Because then you'd throw it out. They don't want you to know. Dolls have been used for voodoo practices and dark magic since the beginning of magic. Which, as we all know, has been around longer than man. Yes, we all know that. If you ever obtained a doll that did not previously belong to you, watch it very carefully. It's going to... You do not know its history. You do not know who might have owned it before you, who might have come in contact with it. Yeah, who, who the fuck touched my Buzz Lightyear is what I want to know. I don't think people use Barbie for food, too. <clears throat> Magics might be at work. What spirits might be attached? Or who might have died in the factory during its creation? <laughs> Okay, now you're just reaching. Quickly, I don't have much time to write this. Take the paper you began with, where there's blank already written on, and draw an X through any word written on it. Immediately! If the paper is blank, draw an A on it as you write it from this point onward. I pray you find this note. You will thank me by the end of this. Okay. Care Bears. Oh, what was that? I missed that. What was that? Hey, Chibi. A bard writes tales of legends true. I'm her. A wicked man's deeds and witch's brew. A hero held by morning light and souls as pitch as the night. A cantor told, a ballad sung, a life taken and a bell rung. A widow maid, an innocent slayed, never a word spoken from severed tongue. Try to be spook. Please read very carefully, as this is of utmost importance to getting through this experience with your sanity intact. We are pals, Ed. I'm going to give you very clear and concise instructions, and you're going to follow them exactly as they're laid out for you. Spare for this word. Use this well, same piece of page for every ritual. Draw the symbol shown on the screen as best you can. If you performed other rituals, make sure you use the same piece of paper. Just draw over what you've already written. Okay, so... Okay. And a... Circle, there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's my... Okay, you can't see it. But I, I drew it, see? Yeah, it's like right... There, I drew it! That ghost coochie simp! <laughs> God damn it, that's all, no, that's all I can see! That's a ghost booty hole! Go CD. After you've drawn the symbol, write a word in each corner of the paper. The words you will write are as follows. Yes, no, murdered, evil. Okay. Oh god. Bootleg Ouija. <laughs> Once you've chosen which corners you wish to put each of these words in, draw a circle around each word and crumple the paper into, the, into a ball. Okay. I shouldn't have used a napkin for this. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. And crumple, 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 crumple. Place the ball of crumpled paper in front of you, placing one hand on on the palm paper palm first. 
and your other hand over the top of the hand you're using to touch the paper. <laughs> now that your hands are resting over the top of the paper, close your eyes and recite these words aloud. I invite the spirits here with me to answer these questions three. You may open your eyes after you recite the words aloud and ask a question to the spirits. You must ask three questions total. Not one, not two, not four. Three and only three. The spirits in some way, such as asking how they died or something about them that can be answered with a simple word, such as the words presented before you on the paper. Be careful what you ask, as you don't want to offend them. And she... <laughs> Please close your eyes and crumple the piece of paper and lay it out before you. Place your fingers up along any corner of the paper and open your eyes and uncover the spirit's answers to your questions. Repeat this process draw a line from each answer given to the symbol you've drawn on the paper. If the same answer is given multiple times, draw a separate line to the symbol each time. Would you like to? Okay, uh, I'm ready to proceed. Very well then. Please, I wish you the best of luck. Okay, so, uh, uh, something, something, answer me these questions three. Okay. Are you DTF? Are you good or evil? Were you murdered? Okay. That says to un unfold the napkin. Or my paper. Okay. Okay, and then... All right. Whoops. Okay. So, yes. They're they are not good or evil, and they were murdered. Oh no. So they're DTF. <laughs> okay. We get go see the night. Sorry. Okay. Remember to use the same piece of paper for all rituals. This is very important. Sometimes the dead leave notes for us to find. The soul knows where the soul goes. Whether our minds do or not is another question. If you've ever found a note written by a loved one who's gone away, ask yourself if it was written before or after they're gone. It's far more likely you receive a silent phone call nowadays, as most spirits were once people and have learned to adapt as such. Oh, most spirits were people. A vile witch by the name of Helga Von Steen was once the owner of the occult book that meant much of this information came from. She wore a black veil over her face, as her first and only husband was taken from her, making her a widow. Her husband meant more to her than anything in the world, and she would have given anything to have him back. So it was said that she made a deal with Lucifer himself to offer sacrifices in return of her husband's soul. She would never obtain a physical body for her husband again, but she was able to speak with him using mirrors and rituals, meditating, seeing him in the corridors of her mind when she'd lay down to rest, and communicating through scribing on paper using the proper symbols and words. In return for being able to speak with him nightly, she would place evil curses on the houses of those in the village, on her village that sent her husband to his death, and when they grew sick, she would drag their bodies to their home in the woods and sacrifice them using horrible, wicked, disturbing methods of torture. However, when the village was long gone, Helgra remained. She had to keep up her end of the bargain, so she needed to find fresh souls to sacrifice to Lucifer, so she devised a plan. She wrote a book of, book of rituals and spells and spent much time copying it over and over and over again until she had enough books in place in many towns where someone would find it. When she passed on, her debt would still need to be paid, so these rituals were a way to open a gateway back to the world of the living to haunt potential victims so that she may appease her debtor. So as the unknowing victims would read and act on these rituals for varying reasons, she would begin to haunt them, making her presence known, attempting to communicate with those she would haunt. Until they found a way to break the curse they'd inflicted upon themselves by falling for the, the treacherous tricks of Helgra's rituals. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know, God! I don't even know a car, <laughs> what? This <laughs> real this whole time. You can feel her coldness in the air, sense her near and feel her stare. Upon her rotten corpse does bear a symbolic conduit of despair. Once she's here, she doesn't go until she pays the debt she owes. When you gaze upon her face, she'll take you to her secret place. Ooh, ooh. 
She's gonna take us to where she fuck. Go to Kia. I'm watching you. It can be extremely dangerous to mock or make fun of supernatural entities. If you challenge them, they will respond. Not when you want them to, when they choose to. You have to understand that many of them have been around before the dawn of man. So a human lifespan is a blink of an eye to them for them. They have, an, they have unending patience and have nothing better to do than sit and wait for the right moment to turn your entire existence upside down. He goes, fight me! They will wait until you're comfortable while quietly snickering to themselves, watching every move you make, listening to your taunts, listening to your words, hearing your challenges, and waiting for the moment where you're the most vulnerable, most cocky and arrogant, and they will take everything dear to you away forever. And they will also write run-on sentences. I, I don't know, Kia. Maybe it's one of them dinosaur- Oh my god, it's a dinosaur ghost. We're gonna fuck a dinosaur. If you hear her voice, do not answer. If she cries, do not ask what's wrong. If she laughs, do not run. If she touches you, do not flinch. If she shows herself, do not look. Kia. <laughs> Big ass meteor. Oh, the meteor, the... <laughs> what, what is it they say about dinosaurs? Um, oh god, the older the dino, the meteor, the... You did her straight into a tar pit. I'm gonna die to look at that ghost. Hey, Varen, how you doing? We're uh, we're having a ritual. Please join us. Many known cases of hauntings, especially those of the most malevolent in nature, have been linked to the same symptoms and victims repeatedly, such as a deep level of unexplained depression and anxiety that seems to come from out of nowhere. Oh, so I'm just being haunted. That's my that's my problem. Be mindful if you feel like something is near or making its presence known to you. If you're suddenly struck with fear, dread, panic, worry, nervousness, and you can't seem to shake it, you may be under supernatural attack. Maybe I did, Varen. Maybe I did. If you want to desperately get out of your house but feel inclined to stay there, but you can't explain why I've asked, such as if your family or friends want you to go to a social gatherings and you'd love to go but feel an incredible amount of social anxiety or stress when you think about going, as if you're bound to your residence. Wow, this is just... This ain't anxiety, you just got haunted. Of just capitalism. <laughs> then you may need to take a really good, hard think about what may be going on around you, especially when all other avenues do not seem to be helping. It wants you isolated. It wants you weak and alone. Many people believe that the only way to make sure the dead stay dead is to salt the corpses before burial, as salt is often used to bind a spirit to keep it from coming into our realm. Herself is a ghost. I assure you, salt does nothing. <laughs> I've tried it. I've tried everything. Salt does not stop them. There's a very specific way things must be done. Always. It's very common for crystal balls, crystals in general, glass, and even mirrors to be used in rituals. Corona, how unfair. Try seasoning salt. That's the problem. These ghosts just aren't seasoned well. Throughout history, stories tell the deceased of deceased of the deceased being able to communicate through mirrors and glass, and even move between them to contact the living and visit them, oftentimes without their knowledge. Good Lord. If you've ever looked into a mirror and could have sworn you've seen something more move, you did. Why are ghosts Caucasian? <laughs> it was an ent entity trying to pass through the mirror and into your surroundings, or an entity that has already passed through and is currently making its presence known to you. The next time you see something move in a mirror, try blinking rapidly. This will allow your eyes to pick up any major movements it's attempting to disguise. It may want you to know it's there, but you're... Oh, excuse me. But that doesn't mean it wants you to know exactly where it's hiding in your room. I'm just jostling her. I am not your enemy. I cannot find time to leave these hidden messages, warnings, and notes around for you. I do not sense their presence near at this very moment, but they will come back. They always come back. I'm sorry to all who begun this journey. I urge you to complete it and that you they they want you to stop prematurely. I want you they want you to not follow through with your pact with your agreement. I do not want this for anyone, for those that got themselves into something beyond their imagining. If you do not follow through with their beckoning, they would never let me sleep again. If I do not 
If you got, if you made it this far, you've done well. Keep going. Do not falter now. The rituals are simple. They are tests of your will. But do not cut and run early. Do not skip any parts. Do not think you can escape if you do. They will not come. They are already here. If the woman has made her presence known to you, then you already know just how bad it can get. If she's lurking, but you have not seen her yet, whatever you do, do not, I repeat, do not spit. If we're going to these ghosts, this is my utmost oh, to getting through this experience with your sanity intact. I'm going to give you very clear and concise instructions. You okay? I'm going to lay it out for you. You're going to lie down. You may choose to lie in the bed, or the couch, or the sofa, or the floor if you prefer, but you must be lying down. Once you complete a step one, you will close your eyes and begin to rub your temples with your fingers very softly. Do not press too hard. This is meant to be relaxing and to help get you to step three. Your garlic of raw rice. Oh, God. Oh, God. Honey nut. Once you've begun to calm down a little and sink into the feeling of relaxation, you're going to continue to keep your eyes closed and count from 1 to 18 very slowly in your head. If you feel uncomfortable, do not fret. Do not bother you while you are lying down and slipping into a state of relaxation. It's your time to relax before activity begins to pick up around you. You will now count backwards from 18 all the way back down to 1, just as slow as you would count it upwards. Once you reach one, you will imagine you are walking down a long corridor. The corridor is well lit. There's a bright white light and you feel safe in the corridor. You'll see a series of doors down the corridor. Take a mental note of what the doors look like. Every minor detail is important. What color are the doors? How many are there any items laying around? What's so fast? You may see many doors. You must enter five of them. Which five are entirely up to you? If you get a bad feeling about a door, use your gut to guide you through. You know yourself best, and some doors may not be safe. You may encounter entities in the rooms you visit. This is normal. However, be mindful of a few that you may meet, as they are not what they seem. Your senses will not lie to you, but the entities may. Rely on your sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing to judge. You may come across locked doors. If the doors are locked, you may find a key in another room. Remember, you need to visit at least f you need to visit five doors and five doors only. Do not visit six rooms. Do not leave at four or less. As you're progressing through these five rooms, explore and search the best you can. Okay, what the fuck is this? It's all in our head. <laughs> Total of five items by the time you're finished searching. These items can be anything of any value, any randomness, as they are not truly random. You may see many things you can take in each room, but your soul will be drawn to the items in which you're supposed to take. Once you've visited five rooms and gathered five items, you will see a glowing red X sign appear at the end of the long corridor. If it is glowing any color other than red, do not enter it. If you are colorblind, you'll still be able to tell the difference as you're not seeing through normal eyes. Fuck. If the X sign is not glowing red, instead look for a new X sign in one of the five rooms you've entered previously, but do not, under any circumstances, enter any new rooms during this session. Me either. Red easy, I know, right? <laughs> Once you find the glowing red exit sign, you may open your eyes and come back to whatever device you're using to continue this experience. During your travel down the corridor under various rooms, you may encounter entities. If you encountered a woman in a black veil over her face, do not look at her if she attempts to lift the veil and reveal her face to you. If she speaks to you, ignore her words. Do not listen to what she says. <laughs> Labeled color wheel, <laughs> Marianne. She follows you. Do not turn around. If you're entering a room, do not touch her or try to get by. Just go in a different direction. Let me smooch her. They disappear. Stay away from closets, cupboards, as she may suddenly appear and attempt to drag you in. And with no eyes, he may offer an item to take. Do not take it. Do not trust his words. If you come across an old woman in a rocking chair, ask her. A ask her if you're in danger. If she says yes, take any item from the room and leave immediately. You may revisit any rooms you previously entered until you've gathered five items and decide that it's time to leave. Last but not least, if you find a mirror in any of the rooms, you may gaze at it at your own risk, but you may not like what you see. You may, not, you may not encounter any of these things I mentioned in your journey. Regardless, they must be mentioned as a precaution. Let me take her, though. Cedar, would you like to hear all the day? Okay, we're going to proceed. I'm ready to proceed. Okay, here we go. Very good choice you've made. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go. I'm going to lay down on the ground. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm, uh, I'm on the floor. Alright. Uh, okay, now. Rub my temples and start the couch.
Okay. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I, uh, when I got out of the rooms, uh, first one was a Playboy magazine. Second one was one of those hentai figurines. Uh, third one was a Bowsette poster. Uh, fourth one was a uh, Leatherman, like one of those multi-tools. And the fifth one was a Bowsette poster. No, no. I, <laughs> I did not encounter any entities. One locked door, though. Who are you? <laughs> It's complete. There we go. I'm gonna complete a trial. <laughs> Write the items you're able to obtain in the rooms you visited down on a piece of paper. Okay, so we have a. Uh, 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 Anti doll. That poster. Mother man. Shoot, what was the fifth one? Oh shit, what was the fifth one? Did I ha did I say five? So it was it was a Leatherman, multi tool, Playboy mag, hentai doll, Bowsette poster, and then um. One of them was was a was a book, Moby Dick. So I don't know if I told you that, but yeah, so Moby Dick. It's all about that big dick. All right, there we go. Second pause, that poster. <laughs> okay, then I I yeah I, I screwed up then. It's supposed to be Moby Dick. There we go. Continue. continue, continue. So the session try again. The trials are not to be skipped under any circumstances. Would you dare to leave your feet hanging off the bed while you slept at night? I think was, most people wouldn't. Well, that's, they have ectoplasm. I don't need it. There's a very good reason for that. Oftentimes, the most evil of spirits will rise from the floor when a victim is sleeping and grab their feet to wake them from their slumber. <laughs> right now? <laughs> as comfortable as fuck. Sleep is one of the most important necessities when it comes to keeping sanity. It's incredibly important for the mind, the body, and the soul to recover. If a spirit is aiming to haunt, infest, or even possess a living soul, they target the victim's sleep to disrupt them when they're most vulnerable. Vulnerable. But of the bank, yeah. <laughs> this happens more often than one would remember. If you recollect this happening to you, even once, it doesn't mean it only happened once. It means there's many more times that you don't remember. The living soul only remembers being woken when the spirit is strong enough to generate enough force to wake their victim. But this generally means that the spirit is already at a level of power that... That they, that they can begin causing real harm soon enough. Gothic. They've been trying to wake you for a while. They just weren't strong enough yet. If you ever wake up out of the blue and feel someone's eyes on you, that means the spirit's strength has grown so strong they don't need to touch you to disturb your slumber. This is an incredibly dangerous circumstance to be in. The worst building stage of them all is being woken out of sleep by hearing a voice call your name. Oftentimes, a familiar voice, like a family member or a loved one. If this starts happening, it means the spirit is able to beckon your soul directly. That's actually happened to me before. Seem to be. It's trying to communicate with your soul to trick it into leaving your body while you sleep, so the spirit can enter your body and possess it while you're defenseless. Leaving your soul to wander the spirit realm, lost and alone. This is often confused for sleepwalking and victims and can result in horrible outcomes. You don't have to say, talk to me? Is that what it said? Spirits often attach themselves to very sentimental objects, such as jewelry in many cases. Sometimes they will pick jewelry up and carry it to another location. This is done to either bring attention to the living, annoy the person, frighten them, or sometimes they will just simply not want the person to have jewelry that resembles something close to what they wore during their life. Oh god, bro, bro, I feel something on my back, bro, bro, dude, dude, bro, are you here? Are you here? Give us a sign. Give us a sign if you're here. Oregano worker. This is fat body real depression. They can have it. Maybe you're constipated. Hey, if you want to get caught, necklaces, bracelets, and rings are often are quite often haunted. As many people have died not only 
when being previous owners of said items, but during the dangerous process of gathering precious metals and gemstones in order to craft the jewelry itself. I partially hoped right is okay. <laughs> oh, that was all for that one. Okay. We never actually looked at the fire. Witches were burned at the stake throughout history, but so many innocent people were also, who were mistaken to be witches were with very little evidence. But so were. The spirits of those wrong became malevolent and were far more dangerous than the witches who were burned, as the witches' souls often passed on much quicker to the other side, while the innocent souls sought vengeance for the wrongdoings of their peers. Some of them have a message to send. Some of them want you to hear it. Some of them are around you right now. Listen, but do not speak. Oh, that's it. We did the clock, we did the piano. I think all that's left is these ones here. Some literature suggests that when a target of supernatural harassment feels short of breath, it is often due to a spirit that died as a result of a hanging. It won't work. They wish for you to know more about them, make their presence known, and to teach you of their hist of their history in life, rather than merely knowing them in death. This also applies to those who have died during the during uh, died due to head wounds and their targets getting massive head pressure or pains, according to many books. However, not all spirits just want their presence to be known, or just want you to know what happened to them in their life. Some of them have truly malicious intent and wish for you to feel their pain for reasons of spite. Simply because they're envious that you're still alive and they're not. The one brand of MSG. Tragedy often brings the most malevolent of spirits. Especially when love is involved. Be wary of those around you. You'll feel them. You'll feel their intent and you'll feel a sense of warmth clouded by a freezing cold malice. How can you have ghosts? <laughs> Do not tempt fate with, a, with the scorned lover's spirit. <clears throat> Respect them always. They're hurting. They may want you to hurt as well. I, I did everything right. You are not stronger than them. Not long now. I did everything. I looked at everything except the candles. Oh. In case my earlier warning was not clear, do not light candles. If you have candles lit, blow them out. Do not have a fire around you in performing these rituals. I want to hurt you. The end or the beginning. However, I have some good news and some grave news. The good news is, if you manage to complete all the rituals, you've brought yourself a little bit more time to escape what you've managed to unknowingly unleash into your life. The grave news is, if you did not complete the rituals properly and skip through them, you've got much less time to sort it all out than you realize. Either way, there's one way, and only one way, to break the curse Helgra has convinced you to bestow upon your livelihood. I use the term break the curse loosely, as the curse can never truly be broken, however it can be passed on. If you want Helga to leave, you must offer her another person in return. You must find someone else to carry out the same rituals presented here, and follow all the instructions laid out before them, just like you. This curse is a pyramid scheme. <laughs> it's the only way I could get her to stop haunting me. I had to make this. I didn't want to, but I had to protect those around me, and protect myself. She wanted me to help spread her will. It wasn't a choice. I had to do what she commanded, but I thought if I could find a way to lay this all out simply, then people like you could just keep passing her on, and on, and on, and stay safe. Leggings. I mean, you don't have an infinite amount of time. Time is not on your side at all, actually, and Helga wants to pay her debt. She can be in many places at once, trust me. She's with you now. Since the very moment you accepted that agreement, the portal was already open and she has been watching you the entire time. Maybe you've already seen her. Maybe she's appeared in your head. Maybe you've heard her voice. I, I, I haven't seen what I want to see, that ghosty. She will haunt your dreams. She will not let you sleep and she will never leave until she gets what she wants. You must find someone to pass her on to and write their name down on the piece of paper you use for these rituals. Okay. Write down the name. Are you fucking kidding me, Kia? Because <laughs> I did. I fucking did. 
Do not tell them anything about the session. Do not tell them what to expect. Just tell them what they must complete. What what they they must complete what they've started. I don't know if you can read that, but you could be there with them to help guide them th through if you wish. But they must finish it in order for her to leave you alone. Once they've completed the rituals, you must tear up the piece of paper used with their name written on it and throw it away somewhere that will never be found. It is not safe to leave lying around. You've come very far. I wish you the best of luck in getting rid of her now. Pass these rituals on to someone else before she takes you. Only names of cards are not responsible for anything that happens. Fuck. <laughs> the fucking pyramid scheme. Oh my lord. That was... I can't believe I spent money on this. I spent money to be haunted. Uh, Lord. Well, we, we, we did it. You know, that's... I guess that's all that really matters. I, I did. I wrote. But, uh, time to tear up the paper. Although she did say she was DTF, so... I'm gonna go dispose of this. And then we'll continue the night. 